Hello. Hi, everyone. I um, have no idea who's going to actually join us. I know lots of people are going to watch this later on. Um, but we'll just crack on. So I love having these interviews. I love chilling out with a friend and talking about music, talking about where, we, where we're at, what we've done so far, what's working, what's not working, and, and ways to, that we can improve on things. And I'm just hoping to add value to people listening, and I'm hoping you can get one or, one or two things as well from our conversation. If you have questions, go ahead and um, type them in the chat. But will you also please um, give StreamYard the, the permission to share your name with us so I know who's asking questions. Um, if you're watching on Instagram, you'll probably only see me talking. <laughs> and I'm hoping you will hear Mary as well as she shares. But yeah, if you have questions as well, as well please go ahead and ask. All right, so Mary, how are you feeling today? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> yeah, so but it's good. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is going to be amazing. We are talking about songwriting today. So, will you tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of where you're from, family wise, what you do, um, things like that? I'm from the Philippines. Uh, it's a, a small island, a group of islands in the, just below China, I think, and right, right on. Um, to the left of the Pacific. So um, uh, in the Philippines, I come. I live on Cebu Island. It's a, okay. um, most of the islands are like resort islands. So since we live in the tropics, it's um, it's summer all year round here for us. So uh, whatever heat wave you have there, it's something we experience all year round. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, what I do, um, uh, I'm an architect. I'm also a master plumber. Uh, that's uh, my profession um, so uh, if you can imagine doing that all year round in the summer you know um, doing construction that that's uh, all the heat uh, I'm usually outdoors so uh, actually in the pandemic I, I got fairer my skin got fairer just because I was not out in, in the sun as much but um, hope to get more tan in the coming days <laughs> that is that is expected yeah nice. Um, nice. Uh, what was the other other question you were asking I mean, yeah, so um, are you married? Do you have kids? I just want to paint the picture of how busy you truly are. <laughs> I'm still making time for music. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not married and I don't have kids. Um, I, I am actually helping my sister take care of her two little boys. Oh! So, uh, yeah, so they're, they're here the with kids. us. I actually thought you were married because I kept seeing kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I borrow a lot of people's kids. In a, um, <laughs> That's hilarious. And, I know my sister tells me that you shouldn't do that on on Facebook. People will think you're married with kids. I don't mind. Well, yeah. yeah, you just proved my point. So she just proved my point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me say hi to Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Thanks for joining us. Oh, by the way, as we go along, if you have questions, you can put them in the chat as well. And Facebook user all the way from North Wales. That is amazing that you're tuning in from, from North Wales. Oh, well. Would you give me permission to share your name? It'll be great to see who's watching with us. All right. So, what do you do for a living? Because I know you do something quite interesting. Yeah, um, I'm an architect. I'm also a master plumber, but mostly um, uh, really into architecture. Yeah. So, I design houses uh, and design plumbing. Um, I uh, mostly uh, I'm not not into like big scale, uh, high 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 rise buildings. More on uh, personal. Um, uh, People come to me to build them their houses, uh, their dream houses, or do interiors for them. Um, for ministries, that's how I serve too. I, I serve in um, the, the, the ministries that I've been able to volunteer for. I, I design stages, I design um, venue, um, uh, concert venues, uh, floats, or whatever it needs designing. Uh, even even into graphic design, uh, which eventually I've been able to serve ministries through that too. Uh, I'm not a graphic designer, but I, I, it's something I'm able to help them out with. Yeah. So it. anything visual, yeah. Yeah, amazing. All right. So, tell us about your background in music. So, so let me actually start by saying that because it's, it's going to be probably really hard for you to <laughs> to um, boast on yourself. So I'm going to do that for you. <laughs> 
<laughs> you don't have like a formal bio that I was able to find on the internet, but I'm just going to tell people a little bit about my my um, relationship, like how we've known each other over the over the last year or two. So we are both on on a part of KMA, which is Kina Music Academy. It's a um, Facebook community um, and a paid membership group where we get coached around our music. Um, and you are one of <laughs> the people who seem to have excelled really well when it comes to sharing your music, honestly, because I, I, I read a little bit of your story on one of, on, on a music blog and you actually said you haven't been writing for very long, which is quite interesting, <laughs> but, um, I think you will be one of the well respected members of our community when it comes to songwriting um, but you also take every opportunity you have to promote members of the community um, like you will share their songs on your own pages and things like that and you also are amazing at sharing opportunities with the group as well so if anyone wanted to come on any shows and share their music things like that you are great at that but I've also seen your music score as well. So you released a Christmas EP last year, didn't you? Definitely. And you were able to get on so many playlists, which we'll, we'll get to the bottom of that later on. <laughs> but that was amazing. But just seeing your numbers as well um, and your amount of like your monthly listeners and, and things like that, they've also been really good. Um, and I, I wonder if it's just a mixture of everything. You always going on groups to share your music or going on shows to share your music, um, as well as being very diligent about it. Um, so, so that's. I know you from the community, and I've sort of followed you um, for the last year now or so. And I know that as you as you carry on, you probably will leave a lot of us in the dust <laughs> because you probably keep going places so yeah it'll be it'll be really good to just um pick your brain a little bit about your process in sorry about the printer it's making odd noises next to the computer <laughs> but um it'll be really interesting to pick your brains about how you go ahead um writing music sharing and um just your general process uh, so, which question do you want me to start with? How? What's your process in um, writing music? Yeah, okay, so um, I guess I'll start with. Uh, since you said I haven't been writing long, I have own, I've been writing um, the past seven years. So I'm not sure if you call that long or, or it's not too long. <laughs> it's long enough. <laughs> long enough. Yeah. Um, I, I I wrote. I didn't write many songs before. I came to know the Lord. Um, I wrote m more rap and, and poetry back then in high school and, and in college. Um, and then when I came to know the Lord, I for for a good ten years I could not write anything. Um, I tried, actually, I tried writing a song and I could not get anything done. And so after a ten-year drought, um, it was ending God, um, and it was a time of uh, I guess brokenness and broke. I was just <laughs> didn't have money and. Uh, so I, I was I was walking to get to somewhere, and um, God started um, filling me with a uh, with songs. So that was a, that was a, that was seven years ago, and I started uh, writing songs. I, I did not write that many as as much as I've been writing now. Um, and one thing that helped me uh, really get um, a push was uh, uh, about seven years ago too. My my pastor and a, a friend in church, they were uh, helping out some ladies uh, who were rescued from prostitution and they invited me to join them and be able to be the one to teach the, the ladies music. And so when I started doing that, uh, I didn't know much. I didn't I didn't know I, if I had the patience to teach, actually, <laughs> but um, I, I, I wanted to teach the ladies to be able to write their own music um, every year. So. Every year, I would get them to write their own music. I'd help them out with writing their own music, and um, to be able to encourage them to do that, I had to write music as well. So that's how I started um, 
Uh, start writing music every year. No, I probably did not write that many, probably around three or four uh, songs a year. So, I mean, imagine five years, probably like three songs. So around 15 songs. I started started in KMA with only 15 songs. Mm. Um, but um, after I joined KMA, um, and I guess trusting that God, I, when, when I hopped into KMA and, and fully committed into it, I, I was asking God, not just to provide for, you know, the, ha for me to afford um, joining this, but um, I guess there was the assurance that He would provide the provision, uh, the money, that He would provide the lyrics, the words, the message, the, the melody. Mm. And uh, he has been really, really faithful in doing that. Mm -hmm. um, from 15 songs, I've been able to write maybe like a, for a total now. It's not that many, but um, around 50. So the, that's a jump from 15 to um, in the span of two years. So that is, is that 35 in around, the span yeah, of two years? Point. Yes, yes. Yeah. Nice. So right, my writing process, um, I actually don't have a specific um, technique that I like uh, a run to, you know, this is how I do it. Um, I could either start with uh, a thought or I could start with a melody. Um, and, and, but um, I guess once I have something, anything that I can grasp, um, I, would, I would start to uh, get my ideas rolling and, and, and um, mm -hmm. brain dump some, some stuff. Uh, so right now, um, I don't. If I'm not writing a song, I'm. I have notes in my, in my phone, different topics, mm. with me brain dumping different things. Uh, if I have enough material, I will look at it and see if I can, you know, come up with a song for it. Mm. That's one. And um, but when Brad issues um, challenges, that's another story because oh, that's like pulling something from from nowhere. Um, you kind of have to. Uh, come up with something totally new every time, right? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Brad does that. So, um, and I guess for me, I, I will always take on Brad's challenge, uh, th those challenges, and uh, it would, I guess, do me a disservice if I don't do that. Um, I just want to give give it a shot and see, because mm. um, I know God will be faithful to provide. So it's just, I guess, for me to see if I'm faithful to to follow him into that and, and to follow him in the, into the process of um what, what what message is he gonna reveal this time what what heart of his is he uh does he want me to tell people about you know um what character of his does he want me to tell people about this time and i guess for me it's an unearthing uh it goes with uh bible study hmm. it goes uh, a lot uh, I, I, I do a lot of research um uh, uh, Different from different authors. I'm not much of a book reader, but I do a lot of research and read a lot of articles um, mm -hmm. on different things, and that helps uh, at least you know widen my um, knowledge and uh, perspectives. Yeah. This is so good. I'm just gonna get a pen because I want to make notes. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, crack on. So you uh, talked about brain dumping. You keep a list of ideas yes. and different then... concepts. I have, I have different concept. Uh, uh, and make notes of different concepts and uh, brain dump into those different notes. Um, uh, and also have, uh, I don't know how many voice, voice memos of different melodies. Sometimes they, I, I forget, I mean, most of the time I forget about them. So they're just there. I don't know how, what I'm going to do with them, but they're just there in case, you know, I need something. Um, uh, so okay. like I said, I, I do a lot of research too. Um, and uh, uh, there's one thing I learned actually this year, early this year. Uh, I don't know if it, it was one of uh, Brad's speakers who talked about this or it was in another platform. And it, it's been something that uh, has a given structure to how I write. Uh, it's um, storyboarding. So you make a storyboard. Once you have like a concept going, you make a storyboard of uh, uh, how you want the story to unfold. And I guess for me it works because um, I, I don't know if I've I've not noticed this before, but uh, I'm a storyteller when it comes to writing songs. So mm -hmm. I, I try to make um, have at least a story or at least an imagery of, of what the story will be when, when I write the songs. So so making a storyboard for me works. I don't know if it works for everyone, but um, yeah, I, I, oh, yeah. I heard that it's it does. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I think especially people that have that struggle with finishing their music, I think mm-hmm. this will really help. Um, I I call it mapping out <laughs> a song yeah. Yeah. because for me generally, I start with um, an idea that is mainly what I start with, and um, I then think about branches from the idea so surrounding topics around that idea and then i could say okay um one of the branches could be the first verse and the main Mm -hmm. idea could be the chorus another branch could be the second verse you know what i mean that that's that's really helpful so if you do that you likely will finish Mm. yeah Um, yeah true you i think that will really help you finish songs because there will always be relating topics of, or connected topics to that idea. Mm-hmm. Um, so absolutely, yeah. I think it's a great point to to finish and to write songs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I also noticed, I think different people have different, different ways of writing, even just a line in a song. So uh, I've noticed, I remember uh, uh, I was able to play percussions for a, for a very notable um, artist here. And she the way she does poetry is, is by line. I can't tell the story in, 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 but her songs are really beautiful, but I can't tell what the story is exactly uh, that she's trying to tell. Uh, I guess for me, when, when I write a line, it's actually connected to the next line. Yeah. Or maybe a whole verse is actually a sentence. Uh, I remember one yeah. time when I had a song reviewed by, I don't know, it was Brad or, or Jordan, and, and he was asking me, what does this line mean? How come it ends like this? And so I told him, well, you have to read the line before that and you have to read the right line after that to get the whole, because that's actually a whole sentence that just cut up into different, <laughs> different lines. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so I, I tend to write that way, uh, where even that whole thought is one whole sentence in one verse. So mm-hmm. um, sometimes I do that. And I, I think it's, like, like I said, I like telling the story of it. So, um, but, but it has to rhyme though, because <laughs> uh, um, uh, I can't. I can't write songs without rhymes. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that. Well, that's great. Like, I think. Would you say it probably stems from the fact that you you wrote poetry first? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I, I yeah. never. I don't think I've ever written a poem in my life. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, rhyming is not a huge part of my songwriting. I think I, I've been told over and over again that they make songs memorable and they for some reason some people love rhyme so I, I'm trying to <laughs> I'm hoping I get better at it as I write more songs but yeah definitely I can write a song without rhyme and Not <laughs> well, if it works for you that that's really great yeah um, I, I guess yeah, for me well, uh, yeah you were saying yeah I love your point about um about sort of connecting each line and letting it tell a story um because that that just makes it cohesive right i I remember um i was coaching a client recently and and i was giving her feedback on a song and she was like this song was oh i just got an idea for this song and i was like well what inspired you to write the song and she was just like oh well and then she went ahead to tell me how she went to play in church and what the story was about and then the conclusion or, or her takeaway message from from the play was actually what set up the song. I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> that is an amazing song idea. Mm-hmm. And I think some people some people will just say, oh no, I, I, it's just an idea. It's just, but they, they actually don't don't connect it to maybe a lesson they learned or a story they heard they they don't connect it i'm like that is a huge part of writing and that is even a huge part of marketing the song because there's a huge difference um in telling people oh i just got the idea for this song and here is a song or telling them i went for a play in church and this is what happened in the play and i was so blessed by the play and this was the takeaway story and this song came out of that play like you you get yeah. people's attention you grab it yeah. and the fact that they can link that 
play to the song and see the correlation will make it make more of an impact to whoever is listening. So I think people should definitely work with song ideas let there be like a cohesiveness to your whole song so it's very obvious what you are singing about or what you are writing about i think that's a definitely that's a really good idea yeah yeah uh and for me i guess for me uh i'm i'm a percussionist i'm a drummer and rhymes like uh, i'm going back to rhymes uh, rhymes give me a, a rhythm sort of and even if i just not sing the song if, even if i just um sound it like poetry like spoken word the rhyme gives it um a rhythm a sort of like a percussion rhythm mm. that um yeah. which uh i guess i, I love because i love rhythms and uh i guess that what that's what rhymes do for mm. me yeah. yeah so i suppose people are made differently isn't it like yeah since you have that artistic nature you you probably <laughs> look for patterns and you look for things like that so yeah that that makes sense that definitely makes yeah, sense yeah. you can be a step obsessive sometimes but uh, <laughs> i do I like that patterns yeah. um okay so can you actually tell us did you grow up around music just taking a step back actually yeah. um yes i did uh well, i guess my biggest influence in, in music is my father so he's not uh, yeah, a song creator or a music creator, but he uh, it, it was him uh, watching him play the guitar, play the play the piano, um, that got uh, influenced me and my sisters. But I think more so me. Um, I, I was very at a very young age. We learned how to play the piano, but classical piano. But I was more of the one who who kind of maybe maybe just because I'm very competitive that uh, I wanted to be better than my sisters so I'm just going to do this really well which <laughs> kind of carried on so um I, and then um, I, I learned I, I didn't learn guitar that much since um, we decided that uh, I was going to be because me and my sisters started a band in high school mm. and it was decided that uh, I was going to be a, dr a drummer so since I was the one who didn't sing and so they they played the, the the guitar, they played the bass, and they both sang. And I was a drummer behind the drums because I didn't sing. Um, so that's how I started playing drums um, in in high school. And then uh, I picked up the guitar more seriously when I was already leading worship. Mm. Uh, actually, right before I was leading worship, because uh, all the guitars at one point in my church there was um, they were all um, absent for one Sunday or two Sundays. I think that, that it usually happens in the summer where they, they go, you know, vacation somewhere. And so I can't play the, no, I can't accompany a worship leader with just the drums. That, that would be senseless. Yeah. So I had to pick up the guitar all of a sudden and uh, learn the guitar one week and accompany them. So um, that, that's how uh, music has been, um, a different, learning different instruments has been a part of my life uh, growing up. Yeah. I've not learned any other instrument uh, other than, you know, string, what do you call it, instruments. But uh, probably I would love to maybe uh, add more arsenal to uh, yeah. whatever, you know, this uh, in the future, maybe. Yeah. 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 I think it's definitely served you well. Do you play on any of your, mu on any of your released music? No, I have not. Um, and for, I think, um, my, my producer does uh, all the sounds. All the, the, the instruments that we need to make, they, he does them all. Uh, for me, uh, it, it, I, I like how it works right now because uh, I do plan to release a uh, full acoustic of all the songs, just me and the guitar. And uh, I guess this being full production, the, the, the songs that I've released, and just kind of taking it all on the other end where it's just the guitar and, and, and just the vocals. Uh, just to give it a different experience, yeah, a different story, but a different experience. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, what is your experience with co-writes? Do you love them? Do you not love them? <laughs> I know some people have a love hate relation love hate relationship with them. Um, I've not done many co-writes actually. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, I, had the f uh, I, I did one before when it was a Brad. Uh, it was a KMA issued co-write, um, 
the other co-writes that I did that were came I should uh, we only finished I guess of all the three we I only got to f to finish one you know oh there was just one group yeah and other than that I've had uh, two last year or actually and three last year but um I'm, I'm not I, I've, I've tried to do other KMA co-writes but I I clam up when, when that happens I, I just really totally uh, I'm totally quiet it's like my bra my brain blanks out in a co-write <laughs> yeah so I guess most of the co-writes that I've actually got a song out of we don't we don't come up with a song when we're meeting it's more of like after a meeting, uh, then we sort of, uh, it's just exchange messages and on Messenger. That that seems to work for me. I don't know, that, that apparently it works for them too, but like a, a co-write where face-to-face co-write, it's still something I need to overcome <laughs> yeah, and uh, grow, grow out of, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, I think even co-writes with messaging works because I've, I've heard of other people that have written songs like that where they didn't do it in the moment. I mean, it's quite hard to also finish a song at one sitting, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. Because we probably don't finish our songs, you know, in yeah. one sitting. We generally will maybe take it with us and that is too and for me, it's especially, it feels like I'm, I write songs at the back of my mind while working on many other things. It's almost like there is a, a machine that's still working somewhere there, and all of a sudden I just get like a new idea to finish a song or, or you know. So it, it's certainly not something that you can rush. So um, I would say though that songwriting, like my experience with it, has more been positive than negative. Um, that could also be because um, I've done it. I've done a lot of KMA rights, um, so therefore we we have a culture for how we do things. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the idea that you co-write with someone, um, it's almost like you you put in the best parts or your strengths. Um, in different areas of songwriting together. And I think your, your song will always come out better for it. So I think um, that is certainly something that we should put on our calendar. Like, I, I'm, I, I, won't, I haven't been faithful in doing this, but I'm hoping to like maybe do one co-writer month, something like that, oh, even though I haven't really, um, you know, I, I don't think I've done enough this year at all. <laughs> um, but yeah. Co writes out so definitely something that will move your songwriting forward. Um, mm -hmm. And there are lots of free groups on Facebook that, um, that, that have people that you can approach to, to write songs. I'm happy to also write songs with you if you're looking for someone. Um, but yeah, absolutely. And on the group as well, if you um, say you're looking for someone to write songs with, I'm pretty sure there'll, there'll be people that will um, get back to you on that. So yeah. All right, moving on. <laughs> so tell us about, um, I know you've won some, I don't know if it's contest, I know you've won some things around music. So do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Uh, I wouldn't say I've won anything. I've not really won anything. I uh, probably joined some contests, probably made it to the semis. Okay. Or, um, was that last yeah. year? That was last year, yeah. And uh, actually stopped joining. Um, I, I'm not sure if I joined any anymore. Yeah. So I know that. Um, I feel like last year there was something you were part of that you won. Was it a scholarship? You won something last year. Oh yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was a that was the, uh, a reward for. I, I may have made the finals, but. So this is sure. it. I knew you, you you don't know how to sell yourself really. <laughs> I should have written all these things down. Like I'm reminding yeah. you of things you want. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if it was just the semis or it was the finals, but I did get a scholarship to for for a year of a uh, like a, a a little bit more uh, technical songwriting marketing um okay. like a it was it was just a, a module or something. Yeah, a, a, was, a couple of modules. Was that with one of your songs? 
Uh, I submitted one of my songs. Yeah, yes, for 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 that contest. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. And then, was it? Do you, do you remember the contest? I I don't know. I'm not sure. That's so funny. I, I must have joined two or three last year. I can't remember which one that was. What? Why did you join them? Uh, f- for for that one, I think uh, someone in KMA or someone in the three 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 challenge, who be- eventually became part of KMA, um, told me to because uh, I was helping her out with her song. She told okay. me to join this contest. And she probably thought that um, she couldn't join since she was in America, but uh, I looked at all the other contestants there. There there are, there are a lot of Americans too, so that, that's pretty much it. So I, she gave it a try. That was probably the first contest I joined and. The reason why I did um, hop into it right away is there were some admin stuff that I had to iron out, which I think you know once you release music, you actually have those figured out. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it was something I did not figure out yet uh, during that time, so I had to just um, put them together, and, and then I was able to submit, um, uh, apply for for that. Yeah. And then more recently, you won. Songwriting was is that for the um, indie artist or something? I'm not sure. So you you put anyways on KMA that you won and yeah. and I was really impressed because I submitted to this and I know the amount of people that submit to it and mm. I submitted last year thinking in my head that there's no way I'm going to win, <laughs> but I just thought, do you know what? Um, it's if you're doing this and you win, you get some recognition that will move your music career forward. You get more eyes on it, and I think there's a lot that you get out of it when you win. Um, mm-hmm. And you might also get feedback on how to improve it. So I just thought, sure, you know, yeah, it, yeah. I, I submitted for it. And then when I when I saw your post that you won, I was like, oh, oh my goodness! And that actually encouraged me to submit more this year because I, I submitted like maybe two or three songs as well. But that just goes to say that that um, just put it out there because you never know. I've heard that some some winners of these competitions actually really really get um, lots of eyes and ears on them on their music that moves them forward. So. <laughs> I was gonna ask what you won, but <laughs> oh, probably not. yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> you uh, probably won't remember. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I got some recognition. Probably just um, opportunity to share on Facebook that I, I you know, or won something, and that's <laughs> probably the only marketing that I got from that. Well, it encouraged me to to keep submitting because I think I had given up and said there are, two, there are thousands of submissions going in yeah. for these I'm not gonna but I mean we are um, indie artists independent artists um, and I think if you're comparing yourself with people who have a team behind them you need every help that you can to move to move your music forward and I think these are some ways that you can take advantage um, of um, these opportunities to share your music and just see, you never know what, what, what will happen. Yeah. Um, I think some people might have actually gotten record deals and things like that from competitions like this. Um, so if you want more information about some of these competitions, you can DM me as well and I can send you what I have because I keep receiving emails, submit your music, submit your music. <laughs> I definitely yeah. don't submit all the time, but yeah. yeah. I think there are, um, and some of them have small fees um, that are, that you need to pay to submit, I think for admin and things like that. And um, just be aware of that. But I think definitely you can use opportunities like this to move forward in your music. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to move on to performing your music and how you um, perform that at different platforms. Do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Uh, I guess it started, um, all I've done is really virtual. Everything's virtual. Uh, I did not have a, a music career before the pandemic, so everything just started for me when, uh, after the Brad issued the first challenge, which is the three 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 challenge. Uh, it was then that uh, I, I got invited into leading worship for uh, hosted in another country. So uh, I guess as long as you're willing 
to、um, play music and sing at odd times of the day. So when, when I started, it was us leading worship at 5 a.m. for for、uh, like a small、uh, Zoom gathering、uh, that was hosted in Ghana. So that's how I, I started it. And from from there,、uh, with some friends in KMA putting stuff together, I was able to join that too. I、you had to be at the wedding, though, didn't you? Because you you mentioned one time that it was amazing seeing people sing your songs. Oh, oh yeah, I performed one song. It was just one song. <laughs> yeah, yeah <it> was <laughs> just one song. <laughs> yeah, it was a communion song. So, yeah, I, I, I did one、uh, the first song that I released. Yeah, but it was a friend's、uh, close friend's wedding.、Uh, actually, it wasn't a wedding itself. It was more of like a renewal of vows. They we they like doing that here. When you know, yeah, after 25 years of, of marriage, they like to big do a, a big、um, celebration of、uh, God's faithfulness and you know, probably like a whole another wedding.、Um, mm-hmm. It's it's a, a big、uh, big events here. So、uh, I was able to do that for friends,、um, my really close friends in, in ministry. Yeah.、Uh, yeah. yeah. Other opportunities probably.、Um, I guess it's me coming out of my comfort zone because I'm, I'm really not a performer.、Uh, I, I look, I see other opportunities that that people get, and、uh, sometimes it's it's some,、uh, some people tell me to hey you should join this one you know just be, give this guy、um, uh, contact this guy reach reach out to this guy and message her and you know、uh, if you if you want to you know join this mini concert then you know he can book you in.、And、so that's pretty much what I've been doing. I'm、um, just re- reaching out.、Um, I guess since we don't have marketing on our side, we're not, you know, big name artists with labels. We kind of have to do that all by ourselves、uh, to get our names、um, out there.、Mm-hmm. When when I share these opportunities to different people,、uh, I shall tell them honestly, it's not going to get your streams up. It's not going to get your YouTube views up. It's going to help a little, but for me, it just、uh, gives us an opportunity, a platform, a different platform to be able to share the messages that God gives us. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping for more. I guess what I'm really hoping for is a, a platform that's、uh, a, a little more into the secular rather than、um, uh, just Christian platforms. So I, I don't know what, what, what that will look like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a really good point of、um, sharing your music because I think so. I am.、Um, I have a gig coming up in three weeks.、Oh, that's great.、Um, and it's the first time. Well. You know, I've played before, but it's the first time I'm going to be playing some of my music live in front of an audience and playing myself. <laughs> great, yeah, yeah.、Um, I feel like I've been holding myself back from、um, playing a lot,、mm-hmm. um, and it's because I've been feeling insecure about、um, it, me playing an instrument because I'm still learning. I keep telling myself I'm still learning. <laughs> However. Um, it feels like God is saying, "Okay, you need to." You know, when the parents are pushing you out, you need to go out. You need to. But we write the songs, we release them. But I think we make more of an impact when we take opportunities to perform them.、Um, true, true. And I think that is one way, one really good way that we can grow our、um, following, our audience, our listeners.、Um, so I think definitely. It needs、yeah. to be something that we do, and and pe- people are going to ask, oh well, but where?、Um, and there's lots of virtual events that are happening. I I think I will go into that a little bit more on the group soon because there are definitely ways that you can perform, and you can even earn money with it.、Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's been a program I've been、um, part of recently about.、Um, Keynote concerts, and that is when you merge even a talk and music together. And he talked about a series of ideas for talks, and there was things like resilience. It was, do you know, it's amazing because so I'm a doctor,、mm-hmm. I'm a coach, I'm a mom. <laughs> There's lots of things I can talk about just from life,、yeah. just things I've learned, right? Things that I know that will be a blessing to people,、Absolutely. and just merge your music with that,、um, and make it an experience,、um, and and send out、um, proposals to, to places. It could be 
to churches, maybe if the women's group are having something, um, it could be to schools, you could you could fashion it to schools, um, because they, they, you know, I think there's, an, there's endless opportunities that you can fashion things like this, but I have, I, there's a verse in the Bible that I love so much. <laughs> it says, God will teach us how to make wealth. Mm. And if you think about all of these ways that you can essentially use your music and use this gift God has given you to make wealth, it, it essentially will blow your mind. <laughs> no. We just need to learn these things and start putting them to work. And it can take time. It can take time because you need to have things in order. You need to have lots of things in the background that that are working well before you can start doing that but even if you just start planning towards it knowing they are there and working towards it i think that will take our music forward yeah. um and you could say oh well um maybe god just wants me to bless people in my music without earning money <laughs> well you could say that but um i think about the 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 men who had talents <laughs> um, and who the master gave them this talents and, yeah. and traveled and came back and he blessed the people yeah. who had more to give back to him because they yeah. had used it and they had invested it and they had mm. earned more with it. So I think there's lots of so many stories in the Bible that essentially <laughs> says yeah. God gives us these tools, not just to, to use them, but to also build on them. And I strongly believe that's why I've called this group the Fulfilled um, Entrepreneur, because one way that you can definitely feel fulfilled is when you are earning money. <laughs> yeah. So money is a huge part of being blessed, huge yeah. part. Um, and is a huge part of being fulfilled and having the freedom to know that you can go ahead and release more music. All of that yeah, takes that's more people. Um, so, <laughs> so absolutely, performing is a skill that we all have to work on. We all have to grow, and essentially, I think it's a huge way to also grow your following. Mm. I want to move on to playlisting now, Mary, okay. because I feel like you've done a lot with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I guess for me, uh, you were you were asking about the the Christmas EP that uh, that, that made it to uh, a few playlists. Um, I guess one thing I'd like to encourage is <laughs> write Christmas songs. There's a huge market in the Christmas season. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, is. So if you have the right song that sounds very Christmassy, that that's uh, I think uh, playlists will just pick that up. Yeah. So uh, the only thing I, I've done is um, the artist. Uh, Spotify for was that artist for Spotify? Or Spotify for artists. Spotify for artists. Um, yeah. Um, website. App. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's also an app actually, but you can only pitch your song on the website. So yeah. when you upload your song, it, it takes a couple of days until it's ready for it comes out in your uh, upcoming music. So mm -hmm. when it sits there, there's a button there that says pitch, pitch the song or something, pitch for before release. So pretty much that's that's the only thing I've done in terms of uh, pitching songs uh, for playlists. Uh, I, I've not tried. Uh, I probably have done very little submit hub. Probably um, in the first two songs I I I released. Um, I have I did not get the opportunity to pitch those songs though. <laughs> so because I didn't know about you know playlist pitching back then. Uh, so it was in my third release that I was able to pitch the song, and uh, that was the third release that I actually got um, an editorial mm. uh, on Spotify. <laughs> so, so wow, that's amazing. That that is big. <laughs> oh. So by the way, just in case people are wondering, what um, so Spotify editorials are like the they are playlists that have I think the biggest followers I think because they are essentially run by Spotify ed editors themselves and people consider it doing really well if you get on a Spotify editorial playlist <laughs> because all of a sudden your music is exposed to a buttload of people and I'm talking maybe hundreds of thousands yeah it could be yeah true yeah. um so yeah so which which song was this then was it one of the Christmas songs or even before it was before that it was a hallelujah instead so that was right before the Christmas song yeah <sighs> 
Amazing. So, so that that um I, I didn't notice any as I wasn't looking at my my analytics, you know, things like that. <laughs> so that, I think that bumped up my my listeners. I think I'm not sure how 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 much I, I, I didn't I didn't really check. Yeah. Yeah. If you, I think another thing with playlists is some of them only put you on for a while. Was that your your experience? Yes, they do. Um, uh, for for the so for the Christmas songs that I released, uh, two got on. Uh, I, the second song I released, uh, I, I botched the release. Actually, I, I didn't. Re- I wasn't able to really release uh, pitch it. I, I botched the the pitching. The first one got on. Like the, I think it was a one week or one week uh, new music something Friday kind of uh, mm-hmm. playlist, which okay. is also a Spotify. It, it can yes. give you some, um, okay. it can give you a good good amount of listeners and streams for the first week, but after that it just goes down. Okay. So you kind of have to to pitch that. Uh, I pitched that song to other um, platforms, you know, um, blogs and. Um, no, every everywhere I found, but um, it it doesn't help get your uh, streams up, but it can help you know you gain relationships with the different promoters with different. Yeah, you know. yeah. So what you're saying is, pitching to blogs do not necessarily help your streams, but uh, you are able my to experience. build relationship. Yeah, yeah. So it also helps get your 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 name out to uh, you yeah. know places you'd never never be able to. Uh, hear about you yeah so when I I was seeing if you had like a website that I that I hadn't noted you know I, I searched for you on Google I'm one of the ones the um, interview that I read was on Lada La Music yes, yes, blog yeah. so the fact that you got on that already and, and if people search for you mm. that comes up that already is big because then they can read a little bit about you and don't know that you're yeah. a legit, legit um, artist and things like that so sure. I think that goes a long way because that's a, some press there for anyone that searches for Mary Rosario. It just comes up straight, up straight away. So, yeah. <laughs> so certainly, yeah, blogs are great. And it's funny because you, <laughs> you, you pitch to blogs, you get published, and you share. <laughs> I feel like there are some of these blogs. Then I go to them, and it's like I'm ignored. <laughs> oh really? Oh, uh... <laughs> but, but that that's just what I'm saying. Like it's it's almost like. There maybe these people prefer, prefer your kind of music because I I don't think I do the same genre as we do. So mm. it, it could be that, but but just the fact that you it, it's a lot of work, people. <laughs> it's a lot of work to keep um, sending press releases for every release that you do. Mm. But it certainly helps. It, it does help. Um, mm. And you never know what will come out of it. You might say, oh, well, um, nothing really happened the last time. But actually, you never know who's watching and, and who will n- make a note. Um, and some people take more notice if if they, they realize that you are consistent in releasing music. Um, so that also counts as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think good good go in the fact that you were able to get on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, oh. So, by the way, I, I wanted to take a minute to ask some, some questions here because I, I I didn't want to interrupt the conversation. So, Teresa asked that, did you have your songs registered with your PR before submitting them in a competition? Um, what, <laughs> what was your experience? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not sure if I did that before or after, but I did submit them to a PRO at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm so I I only submit released songs. Um, mm-hmm. So I I yeah I think I I try to submit all my songs to PR before I when I release them. So yeah, essentially. Yeah, I I, and, I think must must have done that and even have them copyrighted too when when I release before I release them. Yeah, I must have mm-hmm. must have done that right before the release. So PRO and copyright. Yeah. And someone else mentioned that. Oh yeah, she she said I used to or he or she. Yeah, sorry, I can't see your name. I used to worry about. Um, I think you probably mean money in your music, but but I'm learning more and more that if we view ourselves as working for God, then He'll make sure finances are a part of that when using our gifts. Absolutely, God wants us to prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. So prospering is prospering in every way. 
including financial especially when you have a family to raise like i have two kids yeah. <laughs> and i have a husband and i have a mortgage and things like that so oh, yeah. Yeah. yes oh, yeah. i definitely need to raise money every way that i can including yeah. through my music um and essentially i'm putting a lot of money into it music <laughs> is not a- Chief. If you if you are putting a lot of money into something that is giving absolutely nothing back, people will begin to say that's foolish. <laughs> One of the big values that I have for my music is that it should be able to sustain itself. Yeah, it's, I, I'm not. I'm, I do, I don't want a hobby. I want a legacy, something I can leave that will last mm-hmm. long enough to impact the world and even impact yeah. my children. Um, and that's not going to happen if I put a lot of money in and nothing comes back. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't think that's what God intends for our music as well. So just putting that out there. Um, someone has said, so Meet Hub isn't worth it. Uh, what I will say to that is essentially, um, in a way, it can feel that way. But the, the times that I got on playlists on Submit Hub, it helped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think all marketing sometimes can feel like it's not worth it because you're not immediately seeing your streams number go up and you feel like you're not seeing anything. However, it's important to keep doing it because the time when it works, it will be worth it. Yeah. You can you can have a budget. Like sometimes I go on some meetup and I'm like, I'm not spending more than ten pounds, I'm not spending more than twenty pounds or you know, because you could essentially submit to a lot of playlists and all that. There was one time I even submitted and they said, Did you even listen to my playlist? I only take a rap. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. If you have a budget, a very limited amount you want to spend, you will then have to research yeah. <laughs> these playlists before you submit to them because you need to make sure that you're submitting to the right people. Yeah. Um, but I think it's worth it. I wouldn't just completely throw it out of your your arsenal <laughs> that you yeah. use for promoting your music. I think it's mm-hmm. something that that you should keep going back to for every release. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said how. <laughs> Someone said they found that just sourcing the email addresses to send things out is exhausting itself. Build yeah, your yeah. email list that will help. <laughs> so, sure. so there. If you use Mailchimp, there is a free version. You just collect these email addresses, put them into Mailchimp. That way, you are not sending to people individually. You're just sending out. To oh. everyone that your music is out <laughs> oh, i've not done that yeah yeah um so or, or you, you could tag you could tag on mailchimp and, and, as well and say this is um like marketers or media so you know that they're not part of your your general email list <laughs> mm. but yeah. essentially <laughs> it's worth sending out emails don't give up on it <laughs> All right, so um, we are winding down now because we're getting close to the hour mark. Um, do you have any tips that you can share around performing? I, I don't know who got to watch um, the video that I posted on the group. Um, oh. It was really you did on fly. Oh, uh, I, yeah, I think I sent you a message or maybe I commented on the video that I, I loved how you performed it as well. Mm. Some people sing and you don't really feel the emotion behind the song. It's almost like they are not really thinking about what they're singing or what they're sharing. Mm. Um, but but that it was different for you because I could tell that you knew what you were singing about. I could feel the emotion, I could see all of that. So do you want to share some tips about how you do it? Uh, so performing actually terrifies me still. Uh, even leading worship in my church. Um, yeah, I've done that for nine years but uh it's still i mean just you know being in front of people kind of terrifies me um doesn't going virtual doesn't make any difference so uh every time i do feel overwhelmed like right uh, i'm usually okay um chatting before performances and stuff like that but the moment the minute right before i perform it just starts to build up and i'm like my fingers go stiff and um uh, the nerves kick in, and I, uh, what I do is I take a moment, I take a deep breath, and probably just tap into something inner. And uh, usually, just um, I tap into why God is, oh God, 
the heart of, 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 of the music, the heart of the song, or in every performance. So I was I will always go back to that. Uh, uh, I tend to close my eyes even <laughs> when I'm singing, which I'm not supposed to do if you're performing. But um, I, I've learned to minimize the number of times I, I do close my eyes. But um, I guess for me that helps me um, just go back to the heart of the song and uh, why I want to share it in the first place, which is why I do perform it in the first place. And it's not just about um, being able to perform, but it's about sharing the message, sharing the, the heart of it, which I think if, if you do that, um, even with the nerves, it, it will help you. Um, uh, I guess the why will always give you uh, a, a bigger, the biggest push uh, when you're performing. Yeah. That's amazing. What is your why? Um, why are you doing it in the first place? Yeah, I think those are really good points. Really, really good points. Do you... So to round up, what would you say is the one thing that has had the biggest impact on your music career? Oh, um, Brad Shange definitely. KMA, for sure. Um, if it's not for that... Um, I, I, I would not have had the um, the people that you know encouragement that I've, I've had over the past two years to keep on going uh, or even the encouragement to make that first step to re releasing music the community in KMA is uh, a big factor for me because uh, if, if not for that I'd be just doing this alone uh, you know kind of figuring things out by yourself and uh, so uh, it, joining KMA really helped or having that community really helped me so much. Um, just even to see yourself as a, I, I always thought my music didn't make sense. You know, um, but it, I, maybe in my culture, they don't make so much sense. Maybe just cause it's too English. So uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, I, I, I do question that sometimes. But when I joined KMA and like uh, the, the people commented on the songs, I'm like, really? that made sense to you or you know, that's usually a question I ask and every time I write a song does it make sense since I'm, I'm not an English speaker um, I'm not a native um, English speaker it's a second language for me so um, being in KMA and um, um, for one um, since I, I release most songs in English and, and just to get that feedback that um, th they are making sense and they're, they're making an impact and, and, and just the things that I learn um, knowing about the things that I need to learn and unlearn uh, there were so many things that I had to unlearn, especially um, how we see ourselves and how we uh, put value in, and the, the value that we give our music, which was, um, I didn't give any value to it before KMA. So uh, just that um, biggest, KMA definitely, biggest impact. Yeah, definitely. I will say for me to community has been the biggest impact. Yeah, absolutely. Um, someone said this, um, I, I can't I'm not going to remember it verbatim, but someone said something about the more, the bigger your your lists or your connections, mm. the wealthier you are. That part so of more, it. The wealthier you are. So, so oh. the more contact you make, so mm. with, for example, industry people. Okay, let, let me put it another way. Someone recently um, employed um, someone to market his music to playlists and that person pitched on mm. um, Spotify for him and some of the things as well. Mm. And he was able to get on a huge amount of playlists and I asked what, he, what, what was the difference because you pitched before. <laughs> what was his um, secret sauce like? <laughs> what did he do differently? And he said, "Well, he had the contact." Yeah, he does connections. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, knowing these people, so I, I think that's a huge thing because even from KMA, I've learned that actually growing the list of people that you know around the music business will help you and will go a long way. Yeah. Um. So when you see people talking about music and ha having um, some sort of workshop or some sort of talk 
um, virtually on Facebook. I've tried to go to these people because I've noticed that different people are good in different areas. And also you get a more rounded um, experience and a more rounded learning when you when you have key people for different areas. Um, so essentially, the more you expand <laughs> your yeah. contacts in the music industry, the further you get in your music career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Um, yeah. So definitely being part of community is, is just the first step. Essentially, you just need to keep growing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just need to keep growing because that is another way that your music grows the more yeah. people you make and the more relationships you build. Mm. Yeah. So that's been amazing. Oh, yep. And yes. Nathan has come to say hi. He's actually not real you know, because I never have talks. <laughs> I never have talks at this time of the day because they are always around. <laughs> uh, okay. It's just like this saying hi. Hello. Did you do well to yeah. not come in till the end of our talk? Isn't that right? Did you have your snack? You did? That's good. No, you haven't? Okay. You oh, no. Ask Auntie for your snack. No. <laughs> you don't want a snack. What are you having? But I want to. You want a snack? Okay, do you want to go get a snack then? <laughs> Teresa is saying hi, Nathan. Say hi, hi. Teresa. <laughs> All right, Nathan, I need to finish up here. I will see you in a little bit, okay? Bye. Do you want to close the door for me? Thank you. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much to everyone who's come. Um, do you have any closing thoughts that you want to leave us with, Mary? Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I guess uh, it helps that uh, from what I've learned over the years, um, you know, uh, you only... Uh, uh, receive as much as you sow. So, um, uh, as much as you, um, uh, people help you out, encourage you. But um, even so, uh, even I think um, technically, even in social media, the more you engage people, the more you 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 know um, sincerely engage. Yeah. Um, uh, people will engage back, and uh, and, and, and this in, in the music world. I mean, for me at least, since I don't do anything live or. Um, uh, no one knows in my, not everyone in, among my friends know that I'm doing music. Um, so all, all my music is actually virtual, which I guess, let's just say maybe if, if this happened in the year 2000, if I told myself that I'm doing this in the year, my 2000 self probably think, are you crazy? Do you believe that's happening? Or it's like, that's yep. virtual. I mean, that's not, that's not true or something. Yep. But um, since we do all this in social media, um, it really helps to build connections, and I guess one way to do that is just to, um, you know, reach out and, and just be encouraged, encouraged um, as much as you've been encouraged. And even if you've not been encouraged, but it just, you know, uh, I ask for me, I'm a, I always try to offer help where I can. Um, uh, if I see somebody, you know, doing you know, releasing music, I, I you know, uh, share as much of what I've learned over the years. I don't know if that helps people or that scares people or that. I don't know, but um, uh, I, I guess that's just me personally, my personality that uh, I'll share whatever I have. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing that, Mary, because I know you've definitely sent me links. You sent me. <laughs> There's so much that you sent me. <laughs> yeah. By the way, AB, if you want to submit your music, submit here yeah, and you give me a long list of <laughs> I uh, it's been really helpful. So I think for those of us who have not been able to actually say a big thank you, I'm <laughs> saying wow. thank you because it goes a long way, Mary. Thank you so much. But what's what's um, funny about that, um, I actually did that recently and sent so many people in KMA. I actually got banned on Facebook temporarily for that. <laughs> Are you serious? Wait, you sent people messages on Messenger. Yeah, on Messenger. Yeah. And you got banned. Yeah. How? I did. Uh, I probably did something. Probably thought I was spamming, or like, for sure. I mean, I guess in hindsight, it did, did look sketchy what I was doing. So, um, uh, probably Wait, Facebook flagged me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, that is that is bizarre. But thank you so much for sending us sending us these tips. Um and so Terry's I saying thank you as well. <laughs> oh, and Beth is clarifying that she meant 
searching for industry contacts yet, but they're tricky. And I think it's tricky to add industry contacts to your MailChimp, isn't it? What I've done in the past is to keep an Excel sheet um, and just have the, the list of industry contacts in a separate place. So you're not really searching for them. You just, you just have them ready to go when you need to send out your press releases. Mm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right. Um, Stavola is saying thank you from Instagram and, and we're saying thank you as well. <laughs> on Facebook. All right, uh, we're going to end it now. Thank you so much, Mary. Yeah. Really, really been encouraged. Um, and it's always fun when I get on like this to talk about music. I hope people have grabbed one or two take home messages that they uh, will use going forward. I'm going to bring this to a close. Take care, everyone. Bye.